In this video, we're gonna learn something crazy about Fusion. Did you know that you can actually create your own color grading tools and plugins using Fusion? What? My name is Casey. I help content creators learn how to make amazing things in the Fusion page at DaVinci Resolve. I have a free course on Fusion, the Fusion Survival Guide. Make sure to check that out in the description. I got to go and hang out with Colin Kelly in Los Angeles, and we had an awesome time together. We're here. I just want to do some fun stuff. I do. Let's do it. Let's do it. I got to meet his sweet family and see his color grading space that he has at home. Oh, we were we got, got like the, the client yeah, couch the client here. And that's cool. I love the standing desk, man. This is, yeah. that's neat. Yeah, it's, oh. it's, it's good. Keep it moving, oh. getting up and down a little bit. And pretty much got to pick his brain on color stuff for like three days straight. I even found out a little known fact that our friend Colin Kelly has been into rollerblading for like ever. And so have I. <laughs> Gotta see if I can fit into a skate. Yes, dude, this is actually great. Dude, I'm so freaking psyched. <laughs> My dude. That was pretty good. Yeah, I landed a couple. Feel good about that. I, I don't think I've landed any of those tricks since yeah, since high school. You you like locked up several. Couple. Pulled. Yeah, yeah, Pulled. for sure. Clean cuts. <laughs> yeah, I did a Royale for the first time in my life. Back Royale, Mizzou, Star, backside in there. It was a Macchio in there. Yep. And then we just did a skate session in your driveway. I, you know what's funny? That set that you're wearing, I prepped like right before you got here, Dixie. That's enough. Really? Like right before you got here, for no reason at all. You just knew. I was just like, I've got that. I've got, I feel like I've got I should the put pieces. these together. Yeah, I was like, I feel like I should just have a spare set on deck. Maybe Casey Ferris will come to town, and maybe he'll look at my rail on the side of the house and go, oh, you roll a blade? I do too. And then maybe we'll improbably find time to skate in the middle of the day. And Some and yet people all don't this... believe in God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> This is a gift to me. <laughs> and so we got to skate together and it was just a freaking joy bomb, man. It was so, so cool. So not only was it a super fun adventure and uh, had some great chill time, but he wanted to show me a really unique way that he uses Fusion. Okay, so you have a uh, pretty unique thing that you're doing here with Fusion. You're not doing a whole bunch of uh, visual effects or doing uh, motion graphics or anything, but you're, uh, you're doing something with color. So what is that? Yeah, I'm doing some kind of fun color stuff in Fusion. So I'll give you the, the bit of context here. I first started using Fusion to do look development, which is, you know, like a sort of branch off discipline of color grading, basically trying to get better reproduction of images as like an overall systematic thing, as opposed to like making one shot look good, trying to make like a whole movie look good. That's like the general field of look development. I've done that in Fusion in the past. These days I primarily use Fusion for like kind of another layer deeper than that of what I would call tool development. Oh, okay. So it's where I build tools that I use to build looks, which are what I use to do color grading. Oh, wow. That's interesting. So like, so you, so you're actually building, uh, kind of like plugins or is it LUTs or, or what is it that helps you with look development here? Yeah. So, uh, you could think of it as plugins. It's uh, DCTL plugins essentially that are, are uh, like lightweight pieces of code that I can used to make the pixels do specific things that I might not be able to natively within Resolve. Oh, that's yeah. interesting. Okay, so you're you're working with uh, color here in the Fusion page. So do you have more control in the Fusion page over your color than in the color page? I would say I have more context than I do in the color page. And that's really embodied like in this RGB cube here that we'll play with in a moment. Mm -hmm. So with that context, I can develop and validate tools with a better understanding of what they're actually doing and making sure they're doing everything they should, nothing they shouldn't. And then I can use those tools uh, over in the color page to do more look development essentially. Wow. So you can get like really down in the weeds here in Fusion and kind of build it with nodes and then use that kind of package that up as sort of like your own plugin that you can use in a node in the color page to kind of multiply your efforts. Yeah, exactly right. Wow. Exactly right. That's that's really cool. Okay. Yeah. You got to show me that. This is a plugin, a DCTL that uh, I developed called channel density. That's basically a way of darkening particular colors in the image, okay? 
and you can see like just visually on the image what that looks like if we zoom in on like you know the red jackets in here you can see as I move my slide to the right that red is getting darker mm -hmm. or if I do the same thing like with my green I can lighten or darken my greens in a similar way and what's kind of cool about the plugin is it's set up to sort of like keep things level so if I go darker in my greens my reds and my blues are going to get a little bit lighter so the overall image oh. doesn't necessarily change exposure so this is doing something different than you would do like in the hue curves yeah totally it's doing fundamentally different math and it's uh, going to be cleaner than what you would get in there but there's also like more control here like th this is kind of what I wanted to show you like if you look at this red slider like okay you're darkening your reds that makes sense but look at the red times red well, that's also darkening the reds. Uh -huh. So if all I have to go on is the image, that's not necessarily giving me a full picture of what the tool is doing. Okay. I could fight that in the color page by looking at it on lots of different images and observing like, oh, it affects these different sorts of reds in these yeah. different settings. Okay. But that would be kind of like a brute force, like just look at lots of things until the pattern starts to pop up. Yeah. Or I could look at this RGB cube that I had up a moment ago where I can see like, okay, straight red density is doing this to the cube. And this is, it's sort of like learning how to read or speak a different language. Like it probably isn't super I mean, it's, intuitive. It's a different scope basically, yeah, right? Yeah, a different scope, exactly right. And you learn how to read it over time. Mm -hmm. So like you can see everything is moving quite linearly here. Whereas with my red times red, I am, oh, you yeah. have to have more of a red in order for a response to happen. And it's easier to do two things. It's easier to get a sense for like, okay, what is this doing and how is it going to affect different images? And it's also easier for me to see if something's misbehaving or breaking or like little pixels are being thrown way off away from the body of the cube. That's a good chance that there's a bug in my code oh. that I might not have seen here, but it's going to be really Interesting. obvious there. Yeah. Cause you, and you might not discover that until you've, you know, tried it on 20 different images and then one image there's like a little totally. tiny and you might even miss that you know totally. but here it's just yeah it's a readout that's awesome yeah it's a it, you put it well it's like a different scope that is mm. really really helpful to complement like these other views we have into the image wow yeah so that would be like one example another one here this one's arguably even simpler this is just a way of like again kind of darkening primaries and you can see it's all moving linearly down but you can see like, you know, now a little bit of like RGB cube 101, you've got black down here in this lower corner. That's zero uh -huh. red, zero green, zero blue. And then up here in the top, you've moved out on your red axis to one red. You moved up on your green axis to one green and you've moved out like over here to a, yeah. a one blue. So one red, one green, one blue equals white. And yeah. That's happening up here. So now you can read in addition to like looking at this image and going like, oh, maybe that's aesthetically kind of interesting like I definitely think it is but you can see that it is t taking down every corner of this cube except for the corner which represents white because white is not a color that I'm trying to add density to it's a value that I want to leave where it's at wow. so it's almost another way of understanding a process and like this one is an example like this is just math that I was trying out that like I thought was interesting on the image and I actually better understood what I had just done when I saw this for the first time. Wow, that's interesting. How did you discover this kind of, I mean, this, this kind of working with color, this kind of research? I kind of got hipped to this by watching users of Nuke and watching like, it's kind of a, a well-traveled path for uh, color scientists who I know, especially in motion imaging, they'll use compositing software like Nuke for the exact purposes that uh, we're talking about today, because you can get these highly detailed, highly contextual sort of lenses into your process wow. that you really can, like the color page is set up to give you a 2D image and some scopes. Sure. And that's it. With Fusion, you can look at your 2D image in all kinds of different states, and you can look at it in a variety of different like presentations or sort of lenses uh, over, you know, like in this second viewer here. So it's something that I sort of like cribbed from watching Nuke users, specifically color scientists who were leveraging Nuke and going like, wait, wouldn't it be cool if I only had to tap one page yeah. over from the color page and do a similar thing? Wow, that's that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. So that's like some of the DCTLs and the you know, the part we're not seeing here, these are plugins. These are driven by code that I'm like normally in another window that I'm kind of tapping in between. I'm coding, I'm hitting save, I'm coming back over here, I'm reloading and seeing what that did. 
Oh, okay. That's really cool. It's like a pretty functional development environment. But the other thing I love using Fusion for that amazingly you really can't do in a traditional color corrector is sometimes like everything in coding, everything in image science is uh, really driven by math at the mm -hmm. end of the day. But like these things, these require two things. These require math and code in order to make them work. Something that I really like about Fusion is if I just want to try out simple sort of like naive math to see what it does, I can do that without even coding with this oh. custom tool here. So if I go to like my <clears throat> channels, and like this is an amazing way not only to like build tools and to like create interesting looks, it's a great way to like get a more tactile grasp of image science. Like if I want to get an understanding of like, okay, what happens if I multiply my red channel by a factor? And I'm going to do this for all three and it'll look weird for a minute. It's going to go black once I hit this last thing. But that's because N1 represents a slider over here in my controls. Yeah. And when I set N1 to 1, I've got back to a Unity cube. And now I can scale this left or right. And again, see, this is your good old gain wheel in yeah, the color that's page. Yeah, right? That's what that is. Yeah. Wow. And you can see it not only visually, you can also see that's what's happening to a cube when you apply gain. Interesting. I'll go you one further here that I think is fun just because it's sort of bendy. We can look at gamma. Bendy. Bendy. <laughs> I love curves. So we could look at R1 to the power of N1. G1 to the power of N1. I really wish I'd paid attention to math in high school because yeah. I learned all I can this imagine, stuff. I can imagine knowing what this is would be kind of neat. It was. It, it, it became really neat when it finally started. Yeah, and you're like, oh, I can actually use this. I actually know how these things work now. Oh, yeah. So you can see like that's not moving things. You can see like the distribution within the cube if you look uh -huh. closely. Some grid points are getting closer to each other while others are getting further away. Oh, yeah. So this is gamma. That's wow. what power means. That's gamma. And you can go crazy from here. Like you can, I've entered in like, you can get very complex with like the formulas that you enter in here. But even when you're getting complex, it's still just math. I'm not having to do any code whatsoever to make this work. Yeah. It's just math. So if I understand the math, or even if I just have an idea about math, I can audition it in here very, very quickly. Man, pay attention in uh, algebra, kids. That's Straight a, up. That's a thing. Straight up. Wow. Okay, so what would lift be? So lift is essentially, like if we think about it conceptually, it's just the opposite of gain. We're just going uh, from the bottom, we're lifting or uh, dropping our black floor as opposed to lifting or dropping our uh, white ceiling point uh, as we are with gain. So the math for it looks kind of gnarly, but it's essentially this. It's not essentially, it is this. We're gonna say R1 times one minus N1. N1 is our control that we can change, and this is the inverse of that. Whatever in between zero and one isn't N1. That's what we're mm. getting by saying one minus N1. So if we look down here in the bottom, so we're essentially gonna say B1 times one minus N1 plus N1. N1 is our lift factor that we're setting over here. And because the unity position for that is zero, we need to set N1 to zero. And now when we move this to the right, we are applying yeah, positive lift, lift or negative wow. lift. Crazy. So that's like, that's color corrector 101. We Gosh, built a color corrector. Wild. We can do lift, gamma, and gain with that simple math. And you can imagine, like, all you have to do if you want to start changing color balance around is don't apply it to all three channels at the same time. Yeah. You could have a slider as easily as we had just now. We could have a red gamma slider or a blue gain slider or whatever. Boy. If you wanted to and you thought it was, was worth it, I mean, you could just, you could make your own basically like kind of a three way color corrector just in like your own primaries, you know, basically. Yeah, in, uh, totally. Just DCTL. using sliders. Wow. And it, it actually, like, it, it sounds like those are the kind of things that when you say it out loud, it's like, well, that sounds awfully silly. Like, I already yeah. have that. But when you're interested in image science and when you're interested in tool development, those are actually really valuable exercises because yeah. like, you get so You learn a lucid. ton doing that. Yeah. Wow. Like, oh, that's, I know exactly what's happening to a cube. I know the math behind it. Like, you have this very three-dimensional understanding of it that yeah. is really hard to come by if you don't go through that. And then you start to understand the tools that are already built in and you can use them more wisely. Totally. That's really cool. Wow. Yeah, so it's a, it's a fun way of like expanding the Resolve Native Toolkit, even understanding the Resolve Native Toolkit like you're talking about, and then saying like, oh, well, what if instead of this thing that I now know a gain knob does, what if yeah. it didn't work that way? What if it worked wow. some other way? 
and it's a, a, a sweater thread that I've been pulling on for like years now and haven't found the end of it yet. Man, that's that's really cool. So you're building tools that not only, you know, because I've, I've heard of building tools for Fusion, building macros, um, building things like uh, presets and templates and that kind of thing for the edit page, but you're actually building stuff for the color page inside of Fusion. Yeah, totally. Gosh. Yeah, and you can, there's all kinds of different things. Like I said, like this can end up being tools that I feel really confident using in Resolve. I can indeed just like ship a LUT out of the Fusion page here, and then that's a static asset that I can load up within the color page. Yeah. Like there's all kinds of like fruits that can come from, uh, you know, like developing in this place, but it's a really unique way of like manipulating uh, images and pixels with like higher context and more control than you can with a normal wow. color corrector. That's fascinating, man. Thank you so much for showing me that. That's so cool. Yeah, glad oh, to do it. Wow. Well, this is uh, next level nerdery. Um, man, I, I love that. So um, if somebody wants to get this deep with color grading, do you have any kind of resources or anything for them? I mean, I think a really good prescription as a starting point would be to learn the basics of color grading, get really comfortable with those. And then we end up touching on a lot of these things in like the geekier uh, segments during grade school, my live show that we do on Friday mornings on YouTube. Uh -huh. That's a great place to get kind of read into the basics. And then honestly, like if nothing else, learn how to set up a fusion comp, like forget all this complexity that we have here, learn how to set up like this. Mm -hmm. Just a media in, even forget the cube. Learn how to set up this and just get a custom tool in the node graph yeah. and start punching stuff into here. Yeah. And start watching what that makes your sliders do over here. It will feel impossible and tedious at first and then you'll very quickly start to go, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So it's that, that was how I learned a lot of the stuff is just by like showing up and like messing around with things until something interesting happened. Man, that's, that's really exciting. Wow. Well, yeah, thank you, man. This is really cool. It's so cool to come and see your setup and uh, come see what you're doing with Fusion. This is uh, definitely a out of the box kind of thinking, at least, I mean, at least in my world, because I think about, you know, visual effects and motion graphics and templates and stuff, but I've never thought about making your own color grading tools inside of Fusion. That's pretty neat. Yeah, no, glad, glad to do it, man. This is wow. uh, one of my favorite corners of my sandbox. Awesome. Always amazes me the way that people can use these tools. You know, Fusion isn't just for visual effects and compositing and that kind of thing. Apparently, you can make color grading tools with this and make plugins and things for the color page and uh, use it as a utility and all kinds of stuff like that. It's just so fascinating to me the way that people use these tools. So cool. So huge thanks to Colin for having us out and just going super deep in the nerdery. Oh, I love it. If you want to learn more about color grading, I can't recommend Colin's channel enough. There's a link in the description. He teaches people how to be colorists, man. It's just so freaking great. It was amazing to hear this guy's heart. He just wants to help people and encourage them. Oh, just top notch dude. And of course, if you wanna learn more about Fusion and all the cool ways that you can use it, this is a great place, this here channel. So if you haven't subbed, why don't you do that? Huh? I even have a cat mug, all right? This is, this is, uh, this is Morris and he wants to hang out with you. Me, I could take it or leave it.